All right, so in this video, I wanted to go over around four or five different things that are going to, for lack of a better word, uh, annoy a Pro Tools user who's coming over to Studio One and using Studio One in its default setting. First up, we talked about this before in two separate videos, but if we're talking about things like bus channels, VCA channels, and effects channels, in Pro Tools, all of these are going to have a corresponding track in the arrange window. In Studio One, these are not linked. By default, you have to enable a preference if you want your bus channels, effects channels, and VCA channels to show up in the arrange window. That preference is found in Preferences, Advanced, Automation, and it is automatically create automation tracks for channels. Once you enable this, we'll do the same thing again here. I'm going to remove these right click and remove. Once this is enabled, then if we add a bus channel or we add an effects channel or we add a VCA channel, you can see that we have a, a track in the arrange window that corresponds to the channel in the console. So that is thing number one. All right, let's get rid of these three. Next up, actually, you know what? I'm gonna undo that. While we're on this topic, um, let's talk about one more thing. If we head over to the wrench icon over here, there are some visibility icons. This is something I really should have covered in a previous video, but link visibility of track list and console. This is something that I would definitely recommend enabling um, because what this means is that if you have something in your console, that it will be available in the arrange window. So anytime you see anything happening where you have a channel enabled, but you don't see it in the tracks or vice versa. This is something to check out. This is how I would advise setting things up. Um, we may get into this later, but link visibility of track list and console. This just means that if I take this one over here and I were to hide it, that it's also going to hide from the console. Because if I don't have this enabled and I do the same thing over here. Let's take this one and hide it. Notice that it's gone in the arrange window, but it's visible in the console. This can be a little bit, um, how do we say? It can be a little bit strange, I guess. This is our track list. So let's bring this back and let's bring this one back. And by default, I this is the way I like to have it. Uh, link expansion and visibility of folder tracks. This basically means that if you have a track that is linked to a folder, that's linked to a bus, that as you expand and open them, they are going to disappear and expand in your console. I guess the easiest way is to just show you. Let me pack this folder, and we already have a bus channel, so you know what we'll do is we will link this, whoops, my automation mode is on. We'll link this to uh, bus one. Now what ends up happening is as I expand and collapse this, you can see that it, that it that's visible in the console area. Now, if this was deselected and I collapsed and expanded this, then this will disappear from the arrange window, but it'll stay in the console. In some cases, you might want this to be the behavior, but uh, let's just leave it at that for now. And let me also undo this to bring ourselves back to where we were. We'll close our track list. Uh, track list, I usually used to always have it open in Pro Tools. I never have it open in Studio One. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the screen real estate, but just uh, goes without saying there. Okay, auto expand select channel. This is something that might be useful if you're working in the small console view and you wanted to basically have this expand anytime that you select a channel, you wanted it to automatically expand that channel. The way that we do this is we go auto expand, select a channel, and now I select this one, it expands, I select this one. I suppose this is just worth having on by default, but sometimes I will have my attention focus be on a channel, but then I will expand this, but without actually selecting it. So up to you whether you wanna have that enabled or not. Uh, then colorize channel strips. This is if you wanna see color on them. Think of this as the Pro Tools equivalent of the saturation. Um, colorize the plugin header. This is something that'll just follow if you have a plugin that's set up. On this one, for example, you can see the plugin header is aqua blue. And if I had something that was set up on this one, you can see that it's dark blue. I have this on. I think it's a nice feature in general. I've got a list here. I'm just going to have a quick look to see what the next thing is that we're working with. Ah, okay. Next up, let me deselect this option 
for now. Where is it? Auto expand. Ooh, and the other one here I wanted to talk about is things like group assignments and VCA connections. The minute you add a group or uh, add a VCA, the VCA connection will show up, but the group assignments can be useful if you're taking a look at uh, wanting to see different color tabs. So for example, if we take a look at these and I create a group, let's just say, we'll just call it group one. Um, by default, this group has a color. I can right click and I can change the color. We'll give it a nice bright color. Uh, we have a little line in the arrange window, which is nice. And here as well, we can see this light, this, this very, uh, this color label that punches through everything. Our options here, editing, uh, volume, pan, mute solo, record monitor, inserts, and sends. And then we can obviously, we have similar options. If we go to our group settings over here, we can suspend all groups like this, or we can suspend individual groups. So if I had these two, or these three as a group rather, we'll call this group two. Uh, this by default has used that color. Let's give it something else. We'll give it like a bright yellow color, something like that. Um, I can deactivate these individual groups like this, or I can deactivate or suspend all groups. And there's some key commands that you can search up in terms of how to do that. I believe I have the shift command G um, is set to suspend uh, individual groups. And then I can just choose like group one. Or I also have, I think I come, I mapped out shift G to be like a suspend all groups. So it's whatever you want to do over there. Now, if you didn't want to see these labels, we can adjust my, um, where is it here? Uh, group assignments right over here. Now channel notes, this is like our console notes in, in studio one, or rather in pro tools is channel notes in studio one. Okay. The next one I want to take a look at is the overlaps feature. So this is something that I'll be honest with you, it just, it annoyed me quite simply because I wasn't used to it. If we take a look, okay, these are in groups and our editing mode is enabled. So I'm gonna just suspend all groups temporarily. If we take a look at this, if I was to split this and I was to drag this over, notice we have this gray area, which is indicating that there's an overlap between these events. Now, this is something that users from other DAWs might be used to. For me, I could just never get used to it. Now, we had some options. It's either under event or audio where I could, ah, uh, here it is. I could send this to the back or I could send it to the front. And if I send it to the back, then it's behind or over. No matter what, no matter what happened, I could never, ever, ever get used to this. If you're like me, then there's a preference that was added recently, um, which is no overlap when editing events. Now, when you enable this preference, let's bring this back over here. If I was to do the same thing, it is just going to basically cut off the audio and then you'll be able to adjust the edit boundaries underneath. This is something for if you're taking a look at maybe copying and pasting and you say, all right, this section over here, I want to paste that right over here, notice that there is no overlap between these. And if that preference was enabled, you'd have that gray background. All right. I'm going to have to constantly refer to my list over here. Ah, okay. The next one, working with fades. This one is going to be a little, um, how do I say this? Just a little different. So, and this has changed also, and this also has something to do with the preference that I just spoke about. So, if you're working with this preference off, then the way that we can create a fade, basically, if I wanted to predetermine the fade is I could just make this overlap. And then if I selected either one of these events and click the X, it would add a fade in that exact area. But since this feature was added right over here, uh, no av overlap when editing, this no longer works because if I drag this out, it's just going to, um, it's going to kill the overlap and it's going to based on where I drag my edit point out here or there, which in this point is almost the same thing as doing this. So how do we get a fade between the two of them? If I wanted a fade in this particular area, okay, we just click X and then we would have to zoom in a little bit and then we can adjust our fade boundaries just by dragging this out. So in Pro Tools where you have that little icon where you click, hold and drag and it, it'll adjust the fade out. I really hope that Studio One does make some differences with the way that they handle fades. 
uh, because that's something that I still to this day miss from Pro Tools. And then pretty easy to adjust your fades. You can do it like this. Um, another thing that we could do, or another way that we could add a fade, for example, is we could um, quite simply add a fade if, if either one of these audio events had a fade. So let's say this one, fade out. Let's say I wanted to say like 1S, which means one second, or maybe that's too much. Let's go uh, 0.5 seconds. Okay, so 500 milliseconds. And let's do the same thing over here. Fade in 500 uh, milliseconds. If either one of these audio events had a fade and I was to overlap these two, then this fade would remain. Now, notice the other thing here. I'm going to click X is that I can drag the fade handles out. And if they're both connected still, then I can adjust the fade. And I can also adjust the curves of these fades like this. By default, they are going to move together. Uh, but if you hold down the Alter Option key and you only have one event selected, like either this one or this one, then you can actually do different fade types. And of course, I could click the X to snap them together and rejoin them. Now, once the fade is created, we can drag out these boundaries and adjust them. Um, but this is going to be something that will take a little bit of getting used to in terms of how Studio One handles creating fades. And then, like I said, uh, we can always adjust these individual points if we need to. Now, if you wanted to disconnect this fade, if I pull this out, notice that these fades have just reset themselves. And then, of course, I can do this and just pull this back. As long as there's a fade over top, then you can drag over uh, either overlap from one way to the other. And this preference will still allow you to work this way. And then of course, most of the time I, I leave my fade simple and it's either going to be a, a linear fade or I might go to a one step above. I might go to a logarithmic fade, which will allow me to work. Okay. Next step is dealing with, um, what do we got here? Notes we talked about. Oh, and last one, this is something that I used to love in Pro Tools, and we have something that's very similar in Studio One, is let's say that I'm working with a bunch of different clips, right? Something like this. And let's say in addition to that, maybe they are, maybe there's silence in between them. So let's say, let's drag all of these. I'm going to take my snapping off and let's pull this back. Sorry, it's my cat meowing at me in the background because she's mad at me because I haven't fed her yet. One thing that I used to love in Pro Tools was um, clip groups. They used to be called region groups. I guess they're now called clip groups, which basically allowed you to temporarily kind of encapsulate these together. Studio One has something very similar. It's called audio part. And the way that this works is if you have multiple audio events selected um, and you click G, this turns it into an audio part. Now, this can be moved around just like this. And then, of course, um, it can also be restored like this. But there's one key difference between the way that audio parts in Studio One work versus um, Pro Tools. Actually, there's two. We'll go over them both right now. First of all, let me undo that. If I take a look at this audio part, one thing that I've really missed from Pro Tools is in Pro Tools, you can actually add a fade handle to an audio part. And this, I always used to love doing this because it allowed me to get back to my original edits if I needed, but I could treat it as if though it's one file. We can't add fade handles to audio parts in Studio One at the time that I'm doing this video. That being said, what we can do is if I double click this, it opens up in an editor and then I actually have individual control over all these audio events and I could also move these audio events as well. So they're kind of sitting in a container, if you will. So this is one thing that I find to be a major benefit uh, over Pro Tools is that if I need to edit any of the underlying contents, I can definitely do that just by double clicking and opening things in this editor and adjusting fade handles or adjusting event gain or anything like that. And this will be updated. Now, one other thing to be aware of when it comes to creating audio parts, let's back up to the point right before I created this audio part. Okay, over here. Studio One has a kind of like a smart snapping feature in terms of how it deals with um, either bouncing events or creating things like audio parts. And the way that this works is basically that if your grid snapping is enabled, it will automatically quantize to the grid boundaries. 
So if we take a look at this, and I have grid snapping on, take a look at where we are at the beginning. We're at 5, 2, and where we are at the end, we're at 19. So what it's going to do is basically it's going to quantize it to grid boundaries based on what your grid is set to. Now, I have my snapping set to adaptive, so watch this. I'm going to click the G to create an audio part, and it has automatically quantized this to the bar boundaries. So you have the beginning being bar 5, and we have the ending being the end here. Now, in some cases, this is useful, and in some cases, it isn't. So I'm going to go to audio. Uh, here it is, dissolve audio part. I have this set to the same key command as dissolving a clip group in Pro Tools. If you dissolve this, you can get back to the underlying contents. Now, if I deselect the toggle snapping, select all these and click G, then we get an audio part that is basically from the beginning to the end, but it's not necessarily quantized to the bar boundaries. Now, the other thing to note though, is that we do have a relative grid mode that we can enable. So if relative grid is enabled and our grid snapping is on, now if I did want to snap this over to somewhere, say along the lines of like bar 25, it'll maintain a relative grid snapping point. So you can see over here that I'm able to either copy this or move this. So those are some of the things that I think are worth pointing out with respect to some of the differences. In some cases, you might be losing a small thing, like for example, not being able to add a fade to uh, an audio part like you can with a clip group. But then in other areas where you don't have that feature, you do have a feature where you can double click and you can edit all of the contents of an audio part, which is something that to my mind, at least the last time I used it regularly, you couldn't do in Pro Tools. Anyways, that's it for this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.